My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is a roundup of oil and gas blockchain developments. I recently addressed a blockchain conference on the future of blockchain technology for the oil and gas industry and thought I would just provide a brief summary of my remarks. It's taken a couple of years for evidence to finally emerge that blockchain technology can make an impact on oil and gas. I first uh, wrote about the possible use cases on this uh, topic way back in October of 2016, when I first became aware of how distributed ledger technology actually works. Let's begin with what is blockchain. I'm regularly asked for a super simple explanation of what blockchain actually is. And I like to refer to the classic buy-sell relationship that we're all familiar with. Imagine that I sell a book, which I do, and you wish to buy the book, which you do. We agree the unit price, the number of copies you want, the delivery terms, such as the shipping address and the shipping method, and the delivery date. Being a simple fellow, I keep track of these details on a spreadsheet, or a ledger, which includes your name and address, the number of copies you want, and so on. Since your memory may be faulty, or perhaps because you don't quite trust me, you probably write down the same details on your own spreadsheet or ledger. Now, we're both maintaining the same data in separate ledgers. Either of us could have written down our side of the transaction incorrectly, which would give rise to some confusion later. Was it 10 copies or 12? We rely on many central authorities to keep track of some key ledgers. Banks manage money ledgers. Governments look after tax ledgers. Stock exchanges keep track of trades. Now, let's string a few steps together. After you place your book order, I in turn place an order with Amazon to print the copies, and Amazon places orders with a trucking firm, air transport, and ground courier to finally deliver the books to you. Each of these parties has their own ledger to keep track of their bit of the deal. And each ledger has the potential to contain errors or differences with the other ledgers. If all of these ledgers could be precisely aligned all the time, eliminating the possibility of confusion and error without the need of a big central authority like a bank, we could eliminate much of the cost we individually incur to deal with the inevitable errors and confusion. Well, that's what blockchain does. It creates highly trustworthy data without the need of a big, costly, vulnerable central authority. Transactions of interest are grouped together into blocks, encrypted, and digitally attached to each other in a large chain. The chain sits on many computers simultaneously, and the chains all have to match. Such a structure is highly secure. So secure that the Department of Homeland Security is actively researching whether blockchain technology could be put to use in the service of U.S. national security. Early adopters of blockchain technology find that as much as two-thirds of the cost structures we have in place to manage certain kinds of ledgers can be eliminated. To put this into perspective, 9% of global tidal crude oil trades are disputed, and about two-thirds of all oil traded is by boat. Every single day, 4 to 5 million barrels of crude oil traded end up in dispute, or 1.4 billion barrels annually, which is worth about $75 billion. Like all technologies, blockchain has its sweet spot. A very clever and easy-to-remember mnemic for the blockchain sweet spot is ATOMIC. A-T-O-M-I-C. What does this stand for? A is for asset. Real-world things like pumps and digital things like music. Trust, situations where players need to trust one another, but don't. Ownership, a situation where an asset has an owner, and that relationship is important. Money, a medium of exchange or a store of value. Identity, situations where the identity of a person or a thing is important. And finally, contract, a relationship between two or more parties. Atomic has been coined by Professor William Mugayar, the University of Toronto. Any scenario in our real or digital world that includes one or more of these elements is a candidate for a blockchain solution to reduce relationship friction. The alert among you no doubt point out that Atomic encompasses an enormous range of human activity, and you'd be correct. 
This explains why, among blockchain nerds, there's so much enthusiasm for it. In many cases, however, you're better off putting in place a central authority to manage a shared ledger or a single database. Blockchain makes sense where there is a real business problem or opportunity that can't be easily solved with a central authority, where it would be either too costly to set up the authority or the parties wouldn't trust the authority anyway. Well, since writing my first blockchain article, I've monitored a number of leading use cases and examples that illustrate where blockchain technology can play a meaningful role in oil and gas. Examples include carbon emissions tracking and trading, capital project execution, operations and maintenance, and car and retail fueling on blockchain. As I've outlined in my bookseller example from above, the tracking of things through a supply chain is a ripe area for transformation. Water hauling is a big issue for oil and gas. Water is used for fracking, steam generation, and water flooding. Water is produced naturally from wells and flows back up after fracking and steaming are completed. Contaminated water needs to be disposed of at special sites, and every ounce must be accounted for. Local governments monitor water resources carefully, but are resource constrained. Invoicing and reconciliation is largely manual, and compliance is self-reporting. And there are well over 100 million truck movements per year hauling water in North America alone. Other bulk commodities that could benefit from improvements include oil, petroleum, and gas. Haulage of equipment could also be improved. The OOC Oil and Gas Blockchain Consortium, based out of Houston, is about to start a pilot using data gumbo in the Bakken area to streamline water hauling. OOC's members include Shell, Equinor, Chevron, Hess, Repsol, Exxon, and many others. Ondiflow has developed a similar solution focused on water haulage. In this case, water is the asset, contracts manage the relationship, and smart contracts enable money to change hands without human involvement. Another use case is royalty payments. NAL Resources in Calgary has applied blockchain technology to the challenge of joint interest billing and accounting. Many of North America's oil and gas wells are jointly owned between landowners, operators, and partners. The partners agree to share the costs and revenues associated with production over the life of the well, but a lack of trust forces the partners, or at least those who can afford it, to establish their own ledgers. NAL's solution was to build a single, agreed way to calculate the royalty owing to the partners, codify this calculation using robotic process tools, and create a smart contract to execute the final payment. In this case, blockchain enables a contract and monetary settlement. Another use case is trading simplification. One of the earliest trials of blockchain was in the area of petroleum trading, which incorporates an element of haulage. Trading in petroleum, that is gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel, is tricky because the product is highly regulated, very valuable, completely standardized, quality sensitive, and bulky. It passes through many hands, tank farms, barges, tankers, and pipelines, and tidal changes frequently mid-journey. It crosses borders easily, attracts lots of taxation and tariffs, and generates its own wave of paperwork. A European consortium, including BP, Shell, ABN AMRO, Equinor, Total, Mercuria, and others, launched a pilot in 2016 to rethink the trade lifecycle. Early trials were very promising, with a 30-40% to reduction in back-office costs, to the point where the participants thought they could do away entirely with invoicing and collections. From this effort comes VAKT, a blockchain-enabled reimagining of the trade relationship. In this use case, identity, contract, ownership, asset, and money are involved. Related, but with roots in North America, Mavenet has developed a blockchain-based gas trading and exchange platform using smart contracts to capture outages. Next is product certification. If you've been watching the news from Europe, you're aware of a major crude quality problem. A shipper in Russia has pumped more than 1.3 million tons of contaminated crude oil via pipeline to Europe. The oil contains organic chloride used in oil extraction in concentrations of 300 parts per million and is highly corrosive in oil refineries. Most refineries refuse oil with more than 2 parts per million. 
Oil buyers and sellers are wary of quality problems and won't take title if quality does not meet these rather exacting specifications. On top of this problem, oil companies run labs that process thousands of assays and samples annually to make sure oil purchases and refined products meet regulatory and industry specifications. But labeling errors, information losses, or disconnects frequently happen, and the process has a lot of rework chasing down samples. Repsol has recently invested in Finboot, publishers of a platform called Marco, on which Repsol has produced a blockchain solution called Block Labs to transform this process area. I keep an eye on a handful of other oil and gas solutions that are under development or could have considerable impact when or if they reach market. First is Zion, an oil company that has issued a regulated security token offering, or an STO, on the Ethernet blockchain. And Petro, the Venezuelan cryptocurrency, backed up by in-country oil assets. The country is a test case for cryptocurrency replacing sovereign currency. This past summer, the country began rolling out crypto wallets for students. And Crypto Ruble, a possible Russian cryptocurrency. Its obvious purpose will be to enable Russia to trade in oil and avoid entanglements with the U.S. banking sector. And of course, Libra. If Facebook succeeds in banking the unbanked, it's inevitable that somewhere some merchants will accept Libra for fuel purchases. So here's my conclusion. With a handful of use cases now proven and invested by the market leaders, the rest of the industry is on notice. Adoption is simply a matter of timing. And thanks to Professor Mugayar for his research on blockchain. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.